All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. Tonight, we are going to pick up where we left off last time and uh, actually make some pretty good progress tonight. I think things are actually going to go uh, pretty quickly um, in the right direction. So um, I have a little bit planned for tonight, um, and then after that, we might actually be able to pick from our to-do list of things uh, to move on with. So all good things there. Uh, Magets, good to see you. Welcome. How are you doing? All right, so before we get into it, uh, I do want to take just a quick second to thank the supporters of the channel, starting with the partners who are the highest tier of subscription over on YouTube and Patreon. They are Gabby Bashir and Gerbolis Inc. I would also like to thank all the other supporters listed here on the screen. They are a combination of the other tiers of support over on Patreon, YouTube memberships, as well as Twitch memberships. So thank you all uh, very much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. That being said, I appreciate uh, each and every one of you guys either over here on the Twitch side or over on the YouTube side. We do simulcast. I have them up on different monitors here. I do watch uh, the chat on both sides. Uh, and with that, it, this is a reminder that it's an interactive stream. So I do um, like to chat with you guys. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, things you want to chat about, as long as it's kind of related to what we're doing here, uh, it's all good. Okay, so uh, last time we actually uh, had left off uh, just sort of short of our goal of um, of actually getting scene uh, loading and uh, and saving working. And the good news is, is uh, I actually went ahead and just finished that up offline because it was mostly just um, a little bit more debugging and uh, a couple small bug fixes and things of those things of that nature. So uh, what I'm actually gonna do, I think, is I'm actually going to pull up the commits list. And we'll just kind of quickly go over that uh, because it is a pretty small set of changes. Uh, let's see, is this, uh, let me just make sure I have the right one here. Okay. So, uh, there were a few um, minor things that we had to change. This uh, here is the, uh, the commit. Uh, there was a few minor changes that we had to make. Uh, this set of changes is a lot bigger than it actually, uh, it looks a lot bigger than it actually is. Some of it's deleting dead code, things like that. Some of it is uh, formatting. So uh, the first thing that's changed is the scene file. Uh, we can completely ignore that because uh, that is just uh, a result of the scene actually being saved. Uh, so we can actually ignore that. Uh, the scene parser, um, basically uh, that had um, a couple of small bugs within it that I went ahead and fixed. Uh, one of those was uh, when we are actually tokenizing, um, if we are defining a uh, identifier, we need to actually um, make sure that we uh, actually have an identifier token uh, starting as well. So there was a bug in there where that wasn't being done. We also had a nasty little bug in here in the uh, numeric literal string where we're, uh, when we're actually tokenizing um, and, or I should say parsing a numeric literal, sorry, um, where we were doing uh, size of uh, character pointer times numeric literal length, and that should have just been size of character. Um, so that was one that I obviously missed, but um, we were uh, zeroing out too much memory there, which was clobbering memory in other places, right? So we probably need to do something about um, trying to uh, avoid that kind of thing going forward. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to tackle that yet, but I'd like to find a way to make that a little bit, uh, a little bit more type safe. Okay, uh, so... Um, we also, uh, we also fixed the indenting issue. Uh, so when we actually go to write the object out, we had this sort of object needs indent um, logic in here, which actually wound up not being needed at all and was kind of overcomplicating. So I ripped all that stuff out and hey, now it works correctly. So we have uh, all the indenting uh, fixed uh, in terms of, of that. Uh, we also simplified some of this code here um, and we were able to combine the, uh, the property type object and array to use the same logic. Um, and then we just switched uh, the string that was actually being used based off that type, right? So uh, there's that. Uh, we had um, a couple of uh, 
quick sort of utility methods here just to create a object property and an array property. Um, and so uh, that was just something that we added for convenience. That's also reflected in the header file. Um, let's see. Ruggers, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. <laughs> Ivo, yes, we are live. Only for a couple minutes, but yes. Um, and so, uh, let's see. Uh, we also had a couple of, um, of just minor issues. Uh, our scene loader was just reporting a static mesh failure when it was really a skybox failure. Um, we ha also had another zero memory type with the wrong size of in here, which was another bug. Um, just stuff like that, that, you know, I kind of was tripping up, tripping over, um, off camera. Right. Um, we also have, uh, we also had these case and object uh, value add strings um, that uh, replaced all of this. So remember when I was saying this API when we were actually doing our serialization wasn't very friendly. Um, I had forgotten that we actually already wrote, wrote methods for that, right? So we actually have a function here for adding a string. Uh, we have um, for creating a property. We have, um, that's more string stuff. We also have uh, for, for the other types too. I don't remember if we actually use those in here. These are all strings. Uh, here we go. So uh, adding floats as well. We also have one for ints, right? So we were able to sort of eliminate a lot of repeated code uh, and just turn that into function calls, which we were saying we wanted to do anyways. So I just did that stuff off camera because um, there's not much point in having you guys watch that, right? So when I was saying that this change uh, looks a lot bigger than it is. That's all it really is, right? We're just com converting all this repeated code into um, just function calls, right? So that's pretty much it all the way down. Um, we also did, um, we d eliminated some dead code in here. Um, and then uh, really the only changes that we actually had to make in terms of actually writing, um, writing this out uh, was Let's see, let me find it. So here's where we are putting our debug console output for that, right? So after the whole file has been serialized, um, we open a handle to it here. Um, and then we go ahead and we grab the string and we write that string to the file, uh, make sure that it wrote successfully, free the string, and then we're done, right? Uh, actually, it looks like I may have forgotten to close the file handle, so we probably should do that too. Um, let me see, that is in, uh, I think that was in scene itself, I believe. Yeah, scene.c. Um, and I think that was like most of the way towards uh, the bottom. It was like line 1850 or something like that. Uh, let's see. Where are we doing the, here we go, here it is. Um, so we did this for the for the file content. We need to do file system close um, and then pass the address of F, right? We need to close the file, uh, the file. Uh, we should probably also, we should probably loop, link this all up to a, like a cleanup. Um, we do have the case and tree cleanup. Um, so let's do, uh, let's do scene save file cleanup. All right. Uh, and if we, if we fail here, instead of returning false here, we're going to go to, whoops, we're going to go to. Uh, scene, save, file cleanup, All right? Um, and then let's go ahead and just take result. Let's take that, um, and put it like here. Um, and then we can do, I guess we'll, we'll default it to true, right? 
Um, so we'll default it to true. Uh, here we'll do result equals false. We'll bounce down to that. We will return result here. Um, here we'll also set result there, right? So that way if we fail to open the file, we'll still make sure to clean the string up. Um, and then we'll still, I guess, attempt to close the file, right? Which if we don't have the file open, this won't actually do anything. So we should be safe there. All right, uh, let's see. What are we doing tonight? So tonight we're actually, um, we're finishing up the save and load, um, which actually has already been finished off camera. That's what we just went over. Uh, so we'll demo that in a bit. Um, the second thing that I need to, to handle tonight is getting rid of the old transforms, um, which I've also done a majority of uh, off camera. Uh, so we're just gonna finish that up tonight uh, so that we have that old transform system gone, done and dusted. Then we're gonna check all that in and then I may or may not actually rename the XForm system back to transform. Um, so it's a full-fledged replacement. Um, that way we can get rid of, you know, sort of the X form things. That's a little bit, a little bit confusing. Um, and then it's basically back to um, some of the other things that we want to refactor for, for uh, 0.7. Um, doesn't your file handler automatically close the file? Not necessarily, no. Um, you're confused, shouldn't the platform file already the file reader close the file. So the the way that this works is we basically get a file handle whenever we open a file, right? And if we successfully open that file, um, then we have uh, a file handle here. So this just contains uh, the internal data for the OS itself, right? Whether it's a, um, you know, whether it's on Windows, Mac, Linux, it doesn't matter. Um, and so uh, when we open that, we open it with a particular mode. So in this case, we're opening it to write to. So we can actually write a bunch of things to it. In this case, we're doing a single write of a string. So we're basically writing the whole thing at once. Um, but we could write like a structure at a time or, or certain amounts of bytes at a time. So there might be multiple write operations. Um, and so we need to actually do a close when we're done and we're, when we're done with that. And I had forgotten to put that in. Um, yeah, so it does, it does close the file, right? And remember, we don't have like automatic destructors that we can use to close the file, right? So we have to, we have to do that manually. Uh, let's see, Don Developers over on the YouTube side asks, why did I leave Linux? Uh, so it's temporary. Um, I left Linux because I was having lots of, uh, NVIDIA driver issues specifically. Um, and I got tired of it breaking my dev setup. And so uh, I actually wiped out my Linux install and have set a new one up. Uh, and I'm just trying to resolve the last uh, few issues with that. I might actually try and get it working for tomorrow's stream. We'll see. Because um, I do want to go back to it for sure. Um, there is uh, an outstanding issue that I'm having where the debugger for some reason takes forever to attach. It takes like a good five, 10 seconds sometimes which is kind of annoying if I'm having to run the application a bunch of times. So um, I am trying to figure that out, but we'll see where we land with it, right? I do want to get back to Linux at some point. Um, don't understand why you're opening files inside the scene loader. Why don't you use the already existing file IO in your platform code? Yeah, I am, I am doing that, right? So this is, um, so our file system is already abstracting all of that stuff for us, right? Um, and this is within the scene itself, which you could argue maybe it doesn't belong here. Um, but I don't really have like, I don't have like a scene writer and I didn't really necessarily want to do that. Um, but one thing that I did think about is one thing that we have in place is we have a resource loader, but we don't have a resource writer. So if we had a resource writer, that's where this code would belong. Uh, we, we don't have that yet. So, um, what sort of Linux setup do you prefer? What distro? So I, I was on Arch for a couple of years, actually. Um, and I liked Arch a lot. Uh, it didn't break on me all that often, but I noticed that the driver situation on there, at least for NVIDIA, was super unstable. Um, 
And so what I'm doing is uh, I've used, I used Arch for a couple of years. I, I like that quite a bit. Um, before that, I used Ubuntu. Now I'm going to try Pop! OS and see how that is. Um, and if I don't like that, I'll just distro hop again, right? I'm not, uh, I'm not afraid to try new distros, right? I did really like Arch though. So I may wind up going back to Arch, by the way. Um, WSL is pretty nice. I use it. Uh, use Arch on WSL. <laughs> Arch, by the way. Only use NeoVim, ZSH, and Tmux in WSL. WSL is nice, but um, for graphics applications, it's not really great, right? <laughs> Gentoo, anyone? Yeah, exactly. I suppose I could do Gentoo if I really wanted to uh, invest that time into it, right? Um, your pattern with size of is size of dereference variable rather than size of type. That way, the size of is always right regardless of what the variable is. And maybe I just adopt that as a pattern, right? That would probably be safer anyway. Um, you've been using Debian on in WSL2 and you quite like it. Debian was another one that I was um, that I was considering. The only problem that I have with Debian-based uh, distributions, and this applies to Ubuntu and certainly applies to Pop! OS, is uh, the the packages are quite old, right? Um, like I installed NeoVim and like, even on the most current version of Pop! OS and I think Ubuntu, NeoVim is still at like 0 0.7. Um, unless of course you forgot the asterisk, then you're just taking the size of a pointer. Yeah, exactly. Which I've done a couple of times. Or Ubuntu, Ubuntu stable, not LTS. Yeah. Fedora is the way to go. See, I haven't used Fedora in a long time either. Yeah, so I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna distro hop a little bit because I actually have like a separate um, physical drive in my dev machine set up just for Linux installs. So I can literally just blow the whole thing away and um, and reset up. Right, it does take some time, but I don't have to worry about it like busting my Windows install or anything. Anyway, um, so we got all of that done. Uh, the other thing that I've been working on was removing transforms across the system. Um, and actually, uh, clear, if I type it right, uh, if I do get, oops, get status. Uh, these are the files that I've actually changed doing that, right? So I've actually done quite a bit, um, uh, you know, offline. Um, the biggest thing that you'll notice in here is uh, the removal of the transform files themselves, right? So um, I'm almost at a point where I've got transform removed from the system completely. There's just a few more places I have to do it. And then, um, and then we can move on. All right, and I can demo the actual save. You're daily running Gentoo? I've not tried Gentoo in quite a while. Um, you have your own repo with all the things you want in it, plus some community repos. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, there is Ubuntu rolling release. Is it official? Really? There is? I haven't heard about that one. Just push the new code before you make changes in this stream. Yeah, so, well, th the thing is, is um, the stuff that I've done offline doesn't bring the code to a workable state, so I don't necessarily want to push it. Um, I did separate between, like, the actual load save of the scenes working and stuff and this extra X form work that I've done. So there is a break in commits between that. Um, and as soon as I get this all fixed up, um, we will do the same thing. Um, so there's actually, uh, if I look at, I think it was, I think it's mostly just the standard UI system that I actually have to do work on. Um, because that was using transforms. Uh, I think I've got it stripped out of everywhere else. So... The debug shapes 
the debug shapes have an X form handle, right? So into the X form system. Um, the SUI controls have that. Uh, the debug controls, or the, like the debug boxes and stuff like that, have that. So that was another thing that I fixed and seen is like the the debug um, the debug lines and the debug boxes um, now link correctly into the hierarchy. Um, Artix Linux for the Arch experience without System D. How is that, by the way? Because I haven't tried it. Apparently, OpenSUSE has a rolling release Linux now. Tumbleweed. Interesting. And I wonder how. I wonder how stable one of these relatively new rolling release distros would be. It was Rhino Linux based on Ubuntu, but the project died. See, that's the other thing I'm afraid of about about trying things that are too obscure. Right? It's like if the product if the project dies, then that kind of sucks, right? Uh, Ash, good to see you over on the YouTube side. Hello from uh, all the way over there to India. That's late late for you over there, isn't it? Or I guess, yeah, it would be pretty late. Uh, Singy, hello. Good to see you. LFS for ultimate rolling release. Nice. All right, so the last bit that I think I have to change is in our standard UI system, our standard UI controls uh, have, uh, and actually if we take a look at SUI control, just as a quick refresher, our SUI control, which is sort of our generic um, control, has, takes, has a pointer to its parent, right, and has a array of pointers to children. Um, and this is something that we probably ought to also refactor at some point, not gonna do it now, um, but we should probably get away from using pointers this way. But since we are, I think I'm gonna use that as a shortcut to avoid having to do anything crazy um, at this level, right? So, um, what I'm thinking is we probably just need to write a recursive function that works its way up the tree till it f runs into like a parent node, right? Calculates the local X, X form for whatever the, the root node is, returns from that, and then we can then say, okay, um, calculate the child's local and multiply that by the parent's world right which should already have have been updated along the way um and i think by doing that it should give us what we need in order to uh in order to proceed so um we're just going to write that recursive function real quick uh and i think that's basically going to be uh because this was like transform uh this was transform parent set before. We don't have that anymore. And X forms don't have an equivalent of that because X forms don't know anything about parent child relationships, right? So um, what we have to do is we have to sort of build that ourselves. So I think, um, technically speaking, this doesn't even need to happen here. So this can actually go away, right? Um, Remove child, that technically doesn't have to happen either. Uh, let's see, so if we have, maybe we could do it, uh, we could call it based on update, right? So, oops, did I lose my, so let's go to updates. Maybe that's what we'll use this for. So we'll surround this with a, a static. I think we can do a static void. 
Um, and we can do a, uh, we'll say SUI, um, update, I guess we could say recalculate world X form. And so this will essentially be a, a recursive function that calls itself. And so we're going to need two, two things I'm thinking, <coughs> well, maybe just one. So it's going to take a, um, it's going to take a struct SUI control self, right? And maybe that'll actually be enough. Um, so I guess what we could do is if self parent, um, we'll do a SUI recalculate world X form on self parent, right? And that'll, that'll work us up the tree, right? So once we get, um, once we call into that, uh, at that point, we'll need to we'll do an X form calculate local. And uh, this is going to be self X form, which is going to be a handle. Uh, so we've recalculated the local. And at this point, um, we should do essentially this right here. So we need to, to get the local from self X form. We need to get the parents world, right? So that's going to be, um, That's going to be if, I guess we could loop that into here. We could, we could snag that into here and then say this, right? Um, and then else parent world equals Matt for identity. I don't think we actually need to do that step. I'm just trying to think this out, right? So we'll do uh, instead of X form handle, that's going to be self parent X form, right? So uh, that'll give us our parent world. And then uh, our sort of, uh, I guess we could rename this to um, self world. Uh, is going to be the local matrix multiplied by the parent world. And then we're going to set the world X form based on the self X form. We're going to set its value to self world. Right, and that should give us everything we need. Um, and I don't think we need any of this poop here. So that should recurse up the tree and give us what we need, I believe. Uh, let's see. So I think we're going to have ads here in just a second. So um, for those of you who are new to the channel before the ads come up, uh, we uh, have ads that are served to us on Twitch uh, once every 30 minutes for up to 90 seconds, depending on region and locale. So what we'd like to do is pause the stream whenever ads come up so that nobody misses any content. So I know over on the YouTube side, things work a little bit differently over there. Um, you guys aren't served ads quite in the same way. Um, but just to even the playing field so that nobody misses content anywhere, we like to pause the stream, right? So I put a timer up on the screen to give you guys uh, an idea of when we come back. Uh, that way, if you need to go and get some water or something, you've got time to do that um, and, and not miss anything, right? So... Um, yeah, and definitely hydrate during that. It's important, right? 
All right, speaking of ads. We have ads. Uh, Magets, I see your question there. I will answer that uh, when we come back from ads. Just so that uh, everybody gets uh, everybody gets that answer, right? The AFM5, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome. So we've got about uh, 35 seconds left, and then we can continue. Almost done with ads. All right, cool. Ads are dead. So, uh, gnarly quack. So ads may have been over for you, um, but they don't necessarily end for everybody. Twitch timers are a little bit weird on that sometimes. Um, some people get the full 90 seconds. Some people only get like 30 seconds. Some people don't get ads at all, right? So... The exclamation point Kofi still isn't working. It was. Very weird. Yeah, so some people don't get ads. Um, it varies based off uh, region, locale, and what platform you're on. So if there's no ad to fill that slot, you won't get one. Um, you've never gotten an ad on any channel at all? Sergeant Pepper, how is that possible? <laughs> Unless you're... Um, Unless maybe you have a uh, Twitch, what do they call it? I want to say Twitch Turbo, but that's not it. Or maybe that is it. <laughs> you have no idea. You're feeling a little fear of missing out. Nice. Maybe because of the Prime? I don't know. I, I'm not sure if the Prime does that or not. That's a good question. Um, so Magetz, uh was asking a good question. Uh, been wondering about. Uh, want, been wondering about this for a while. What does uh, the X stands for in, in X form, cross form, transform? Have I missed something? Okay, so um, it's just kind of another way of saying transform. And the reason that we named it X form is because uh, we already had something named transform in the engine, which we're actively switching away from. Uh, so I didn't want there to be a naming conflict. And so um, we're calling the new system X form while we're putting in um, while we're putting that in. And then once we have everything transitioned, from um, transforms to X forms, we're going to check that in and then at some point rename X forms back to transforms. And then that's, that's basically it, right? Um, is it, I forget what it's called, is it Twitch Turbo? I have it, so I forget exactly what it's called now, but yeah, I think it is Twitch Turbo actually. <laughs> Nitro is the Discord one, right? So yeah, I think it is Twitch Turbo. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe they just like you a lot, Sergeant Pepper. Maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. I don't think it's an ad blocker, because um, I don't know how effective those always are. I feel like they don't block everything. All right, um, so. What we're going to do here is in the updates, when we're updating the control, we're just going to update all the way up. And I realize that this is not going to be the most, it's not necessarily going to be the best way to do this. Um, but I think it's, it's going to cover our bases for now because we're going to wind up actually reworking the way hierarchy works in the standard UI system anyway. So I'm not really worried about it. Um, SUI recalculate world X form. Um, and we're just going to pass along self or slef. That's fine too. 
Um, and I think that'll give us what we need there. Okay, so it looks like we have one more on line 398. So this is the remove child. We can get rid of that one, actually. Don't need it. So we were having to do that before um, because of the way that our old transform system worked. Um, we don't have to do that anymore. We literally just look to see what the parent is at the time of update and go from there. Um, okay, SUI text box does have something. So let's take a look at that uh, 239. So SUI text box 239. Okay, so this might get a little bit trickier. Um, so this is where we we load up the SUI text box control and we're setting the clip masks transform to be a child of the self transform. Uh, I feel like that's probably something we should take of care of maybe in the update. Yeah, we can take care of that in the update. Let's do that. Um, so instead of instead of doing that here, uh, we're essentially going to do. We have the control update, which is going to pass self, but it's not going to take care of the. It's not going to take care of the clip masks X form, which also needs to be handled in there. So after we do base control updates, uh, we're actually going to need to we're actually going to need to do something very similar to this. I'm just going to copy pasta this for now. Just because we're interested in getting this to work, we're not interested in making it fully right, right now. Because like I said, we're gonna rework the hierarchy anyways, so. All right, so let's do SUI text box control, recalculate world X form. Um, and actually it's not even that, it's really just the text box clip mask that we need to do. So um, let's see. Actually, we, we don't even really need a function for this, right? We can actually just copy this crap out of here. So let's do this. Right, so we'll get the local of the typed data, which actually we don't even need this. Let's get rid of that. Uh, the typed data, I think we have that defined here somewhere. Right. Uh, so we have Type to data here. Um, instead of the parent set, we need to get the local for that. So typed data, clip mask, X form, clip X form. Okay. Um, so we calculate the local on that. Um, and then we get the local on that. So that's going to be, again, type data, clip mask, clip X form. The self world, so the parent world is going to be, uh, we need to get that. Um, so we'll do mat for 
parent world equals x form world get and that's going to be self um, x form All right so we have the parent world there we multiply the that against the local which has just been updated and then we do the x form world set uh, instead of self x form that's going to be type data clip mask clip x form we set that to self world um, and then we fix our typo and we go to everywhere else in the file that has this and I don't think we we don't need that there uh, this is in load we don't need that there and I think I think that's it okay so we have a undeclared function transform translate okay so we need to fix that that is in testbed main okay so we're, we are almost done because it's it's compiled everything down down to the testbed now um the game state has Standard UI system has transform in it somewhere. Really? Doesn't appear like that to me. Oh, okay. IntelliSense, I guess, was out of out of date. Okay. So let's see, what's this doing? This is doing our test panel X form. Um, so it looks like we have a few other places where this is referenced. That one's a comment, so I don't care about that. But I think this is the only actual error. So I think we can just replace this with a X form translate, um, change this from address of, and I think that might be it. Editor gizmo, debug line 3D creates, okay. Uh, so when we create that, uh, that is looking for a parent X form, which we do not have one. So we're going to do K handle uh, invalid. Let's see. Uh, why are you creating the trash parent world variable with trash data when you could just set it to max mat for parent world equals mat for identity and drop the else block? Oh, are you talking about where I did? Are you talking about the hack that I did in? I think it was in here. Um... Are you talking about this? Um, so you're talking about like I could just do equals map for identity, right? And then if I have this assigned again, I'm trying to avoid a double assignment essentially because I don't need to run through this if I'm going to do this, right? So I'm just trying to avoid doing a, a second assignment there. Because this way it only gets assigned once. Which I know is like super minor, right? 
technically, I guess it's a little bit cleaner, but you are doing two assignments if you do it that way, potentially. Ghost Goblin, welcome. First time chat. Uh, well, Vulcan Dev, good evening, sir. I'm C and OpenGL solo game dev working on early access game on Steam. Nice. Cool. Nice to meet you as well. Welcome to the stream. Minor things add up. Yeah, exactly. Um, this one I don't think is going to be a big deal because, like I said, we're, we're going to refactor the hierarchy for um, the standard UI, which is one of the reasons I put that on pause um, because we are going to we are going to refactor that. Thankfully, we don't really need the standard UI just yet. So it's not going to get in the way. All right. Bad comic. Good to see you over on the uh, YouTube side. Hello. All right. Um, so I think Kringer's flossed. We build. All right. So let's run this and see how hideous the... UI looks. <laughs> yeah, some things are definitely wrong. This button is not supposed to be up here for one. Um, yeah, so it looks like our, our, our parenting is wrong, right? For sure. Uh, but... That's not what I want to demo anyways. So um, what I wanted to demo was the save and load. So if I load up the scene, uh, and I was moving the camera around a little bit, uh, we see that the uh, that things are positioned a little bit differently, right? And that's because I actually made some modifications in save the scene um, off camera. But uh, what I can do now is I can select like the car, for example, and uh, I don't know, move it over here and take the tree and move it over here, right? Um, and then I can hit uh, Control S, save it, right? We're still we're still outputting all that debug stuff to the console, which we probably don't need to do anymore. But that's basically what it's writing to disk, right? And that says it's writing it to disk. Um, and if we open that file in the editor, I guess I can't do it that way, but um, if we were to open that file in the editor, we would see uh, this new change. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit more obvious and rotate the car the other way, right? And I'll save that again. And then I'm going to unload the scene. And I'm going to load the scene back up. And notice it comes in with the new state. Now, to prove this, that it's not just like holding on to it in memory, I'm going to quit the application and relaunch it. And bring this guy down here, load. And now you can see that the car is now indeed in the new position. So uh, all the work that we've done with creating our custom storage formats, um, creating our tokenizer and our parser for that, creating our serializer and our deserializer for that, um, and then setting up uh, all of our new hierarchy stuff, uh, all of our new X form stuff, all of that stuff is in place and works now, which is awesome. Um, just load another scene. I don't have another scene. <laughs> um, so one thing about the test bed, right, is uh, because it is a test bed, I don't have the ability to like point it to different scenes. Um, I only have the ability to load the test scene, right, because it's hard coded as to what scene gets loaded. Um, uh, let's see. I believe you're still using just simple Lambertian and Fong shading. Nope, nope. This is P PBR at this point. Yeah, we switched to PBR a while ago. Um, we do we are missing some aspects of that, but we are doing uh, PBR. So um, yeah, and and we added uh, cascading shadow maps to that as well. So um, yeah, there's there's that. Uh, let's see. Let me catch up with chat here. Can you tell me about your game engine? Are you going for a custom pipe for your game? Um, yeah, so um, everything here, with the exception of a few small um, file type loaders, is all written from scratch. Um, that includes all of our memory management, all of our, um, our containers, right? So like dynamic arrays, 
hash tables, things like that. Um, our string library, all that stuff has been written from scratch. Um, the only thing that uh, we are referencing external code for is uh, the uh, the ability to load different uh, file formats for images, for textures, um, loading of system fonts, right? You'll notice we have UTF-8 support here. That's not a bitmap font. Um, that is that is actually loaded in. Um, so we call that system fonts. Um, and then uh, we also do that for loading a couple of audio fonts, just because I didn't want or uh, audio file formats rather, just because I didn't want to screw with, um, you know, spending weeks on end writing um, parsers for those formats. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, pretty much everything that we've built so far has has uh, has been from scratch. I, you know, ninety eight percent of it, or or what have you. Um, so we have uh, a few different things. Um, we have a couple of different views that we can uh, look at too. So we're sort of in the normal view now. We have a lighting only view, which shows us just the lighting um, as given to us um, by the directional light and the one uh, direct, uh, the one um, point light that we have in here. Um, and then we also have uh, a view of the normals. Um, now this particular Sponza mesh actually has some invalid normals, which displays black. So we have to actually have uh, that in there as well. Um, we also have uh, a view for the cascading shadow maps, so you can actually see the various cascades um, in a colorized sort of fashion um, as to what cascade you're using. Um, and then uh, you can also very, very clearly see where that sh uh, that shadow map fades out uh, in the in the center, right before the cutoff point, right. Uh, so we have that, uh, and then we also have a wireframe view uh, as well. Um, that right now just displays uh, sort of the uh, the terrain and, and the meshes in wireframe uh, mode. Uh, the wireframe mode also allows me to sort of quickly demo that we do have a basic LOD um, and chunking available in the terrain. So the terrain will only draw um, these individual chunks that are uh, currently rendered by the camera or visible by the camera. And the further they get from the camera, you'll notice that the geometry count uh, drops the further it goes away. And if we back this off, you'll see them dropping at the distance. Um, it basically halves the amount of geometry for each level of detail um, until you get all the way down to uh, one, um, one square all the way in the distance. And you can kind of see those here, right? So uh, yeah, that's kind of more or less where, where we're at uh, at the moment. Um, and uh, our, our first rendering backend is Vulkan right now. Um, we did design this so that it's the engine is agnostic as to uh, what type of rendering API is being used. So we're eventually going to have backends for uh, Direct3D uh, and Metal and maybe OpenGL. I kind of doubt it. Um, but we might, we might actually support uh, OpenGL at some point, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that's kind of where we're at at the moment. And um, we actually just uh, finished refactoring our um, our scene, uh, our scene hierarchy, as well as our scene transform system to um, something that's a lot better, uh, that uses uh, handles instead of pointers, which we're going to be converting a lot of our systems to use that. Um, and so we did basically all of that all of that all at once in a feature branch. And we also uh, created our own storage format with a tokenizer and a parser and a serializer and a deserializer to store our scenes in. Um, yes, I know the Kofi command doesn't work. I haven't fixed it yet. <laughs> I've come a long way with the engine, but the Kofi command doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to look at the bot because I, I suspect the bot is just not doing the thing that it needs to do. Um, wait a minute. It worked right there. It worked when you did it that time. So maybe it's just the bot being sus. Yeah. <laughs> it does that sometimes though. Like sometimes it'll just work and then other times it just won't. I don't understand why. Um... Knock, knock. That's how I'm gonna pronounce it. 
Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Maybe there's a Twitch bot bug. I think so. Yeah, sometimes it just like doesn't respond. I think I'm going to wind up writing my own Twitch bot, to be completely honest. Um, what made you choose to build the engine using C? Did you consider using any other languages like Zig? Funny you asked that. Um, 3D Code Warrior, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome. Uh, oh, by the way, thank you for the stretch redeem. Um, so I have thought about using other things like Odin and Zig, right? I've been, I've been looking into them. The problem with them is, is they are still very, very much in their infancy and there are actual bugs in the language itself. Um, and there are things that just don't exist. And so when you're developing something as complex as a game engine, you cannot be having that stuff get in the way, right? You just can't. Um, you have enough to deal with for sure. So um, I won't be writing it uh, in that in that, either one of those languages anytime soon um, because neither one of them are really stable enough to do it just yet. However, that does not mean that I couldn't maybe write the game code in Zig, for example. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but for right now, yeah, it's just not stable enough to do. Um, and I like, I chose C specifically for the language, uh, simplicity. Um, you have an impress, impressive foundation. I'm jealous. My game engine, game and engine is not nearly as impressive. Yeah, but bear in mind, um, this is three years worth of work. Now, granted it's three years of part-time work, right? Cause I do this part-time, um, on like nights and weekends whenever I have, uh, spare time. I, I don't do this full time. Um, this project, right? I can't. Don't have the following for it. Um, but uh, I do do this whenever I'm um, I'm able to. Ivo, thank you for the donation on uh, Kofi. Appreciate that. Um, and so, yeah. Um, you know, it, it does represent three years of work, but it's uh, if you were to compile, compile everything together, realistically in a full-time situation, you're probably talking about six to eight months worth of work. I'm thinking. So, yeah. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, <laughs> Ivo, I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to read the first iteration of that message, but <laughs> thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> I don't that's a weird autocorrect. <laughs> um do you mind if I link my game project and get your opinion from a technical point of view? Um yeah, so what I would do is um, I would encourage you to join the Discord server um, and link it there because um, on stream really isn't the isn't the venue for it, right? Uh, but I, I, I don't mind taking a look at it. So if you want to um, join the Discord and uh, hop in there and go to the Kohee channel and just uh, at me in there and then, uh, you know, I'll take a look at it when I can. Okay, so that being said, it looks like we have some, some issues with uh, with our, our standard UI transforms, um, which we probably ought to resolve. So um, let me actually just refresh my memory. So I think that was... I think it was literally just like pinning everything to the upper left. Yeah, so it looks like our... So our animated button here should be like over here. And we don't see anything going on here which tells me that, uh, you know, because this text box is currently active, right? So uh, as I type in here, like I can type exit and hit enter and it does the thing, right? But it's not rendering, which tells me that my clip mask is most likely not right. Um, what is interesting is that the text box was correct though. So um, we may have, we may have gotten something wrong um, in our actual, let me see, was it, 
Didn't we do something in the button as well? I thought. We did something in ads. I know that. So we'll have to break for ads and then we'll come back. Um, let's see. Uh, Iboka, we, uh, we have to um, just fix a couple of things that uh, we broke by removing our old transforms and replacing them with our new system. So that's all we're that's all we're doing as far as um, UI goes at the moment. So those of you over on the YouTube side, I know um, it works a little bit differently for you guys, but um, we do like to pause whenever uh, ads come up. Um. Is there some good tutorials on resource? You know what, uh, bad comic. I'm going to answer that question when we come back from ads, right? Because I think I think both sides could could benefit from that that answer. Because that is a pretty good question. So we're almost done with ads. Just a few more seconds. All right, so uh, bad comic over on the YouTube side uh, says, uh, is there some good tutorials um, or resources on making systems agnostic like the renderer or audio? Um, I am not aware of any. However, um, well, I should say I'm not aware of any tutorials. There was one write-up um, that I thought was pretty good. I think it was by... Fabian Sanglard. Let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, this is it. Um, so there was this. I'll drop this link in both both uh, both chats. This was an excellent read. Uh, if you guys have never read this, so uh, this is a a Doom three source code review. Um, and one of the things that he goes into is the renderer, um, and specifically how the renderer is split into like a front end and back end, and uh, specifically how the renderer works and all the different parts and pieces of it. I would read through this entire series if I were you. Um, so there's that, and then there's also, um, dang it, I don't have the book here again, but there's also uh, the book that I always recommend, which is uh, Game Engine Architecture by Jason Gregory, which is another really good uh, resource on there. Um, so yeah, uh, I would definitely, that's highly recommended reading. Um, it's not really a tutorial. It's more of a, you know, taking a look at an example of something that already exists. But yeah, it's it's fantastic. Um, Fabian is a legend. Yeah, for sure. Um is there a specific game this engine will be used for, or are you focused on developing a render and engine product? So, both. So, um, I do have uh, several specific games in mind for this, uh, of different types. Um, and so the idea behind um, this engine, or this project, is uh, that we are going to test it by writing games for it and releasing it, right? We're not just going to write like stupid little games and never release them like we're gonna actually take these games all the way to release on steam um and so uh you know we're gonna start off with with something very simple for our first game the first game is gonna be probably just a very simple arcade game i've, I've already got most of that mapped out in my head how i want to do it i've just got to sort of standardize it a little bit and so we're gonna use that to um to really uh solidify the engine runtime um, and, you know, put the engine through its paces, right? Um, see what works, see what doesn't work and go from there. Um, so I'm thinking we're going to make at least that game without any sort of editor. Uh, and the reason that I'm thinking that is because we want to make sure that the engine core and the engine runtime is absolutely rock solid before we build an editor on top of that. Because if we have to change stuff in the engine core, then we have to change stuff in the editor on top of that as well. And that just gets messy, right? 
So we want to build a couple of simple games um, probably before we actually start building the editor. And then I've got a idea for a much bigger game uh, that's going to be sort of the flagship game that we're going to ship with this engine, right? So um, yeah, the answer is is yes. There are there are to both portions of that. Um, there are actually a lot of system agnostic libs out there to use in C++, unfortunately not in C. True. Yes. Um, and after you read that game architecture book, read physically based rendering. Yes, that's another good one. Diamon, good to see you. Welcome. How are you doing? Glad to have you here. Um, I have a, I don't know if you heard my, um, my response before, but, uh, we're not doing UI. We're just kind of fixing some bugs that were, um, that were brought up by the transform changes that we made. So we just have to fix that. Uh, okay. So, uh, RCW, thank you for the follow. Speaking of games, I assume the engine is 3d only for now, um, from the looks of the test bed. So funny thing about 2d versus 3d this this actually comes up a lot and it's it's a bit of a misnomer right is folks assume that 2d and 3d are completely separate beasts but they're really not um at the, at the core so all 2d really is is like every every 2d game out there still uses a 3d rendering api right there is no there is no 2d rendering api right um the only difference really is, is you use X and Y, you don't use Z, which is the depth, you know, to in and out of the screen, you can say, um, and, or you don't use a depth buffer. That's the only difference, right? It's just, you render things in a certain order, one on top of another, um, just in place on the screen and you don't, you don't have a depth. That's the only difference, right? So you can build workflows around that, um, that are specific to 2D but there's no reason that this couldn't be used for 2D games. No reason whatsoever. A lot more triangles. I mean, yes and no, depending on what you're doing, right? Uh, 2D games generally uh, tend to use less triangles only because, you know, especially if you have something that's like a tile-based render, it's just everything's quads, right? Um, Banisura Gaming, by the way, first time chat, welcome. Uh, just wanted to say thank you for making the series. Found you a few weeks ago and you've been catching up the videos. Awesome. Uh, learning so much on the journey and building your first engine. Awesome. Welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, there's actually a funny video on YouTube on how 2D games actually run on 3D but seem to you like 2D. Yeah, exactly. Yep. 2D can have an instance. That's true. But so can 3D, for some things. Uh, Bullet Hell games can work for the pixel shade. Work the pixel shader for sure, though. Yes, yeah. So there's there's multiple ways to do that, right? And because we've split the rendering back end and the front end up, um, and because we actually have a render graph system, we could configure this to to do a 2D 2D game quite easily, right? We can we can actually set this up to to work that way. Um. Because like our, our our sort of UI layer that we have now already basically does what a 2D engine would do. So, okay, cool. Um, because 2D within the 3D, but also, wait, because 2D is within 3D, but 2D also represents 3D shapes on the monitor. Yeah, exactly. So it's a bit neb nebulous there, but yeah, more or less. Um, implemented a graph layer, missed that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, we have a render graph, whole render graph system that we set up. So, um, yeah, that was done earlier. Wait, no, that was done last year. Yeah. All right. Um, so. Let me think about, I guess the first thing I should probably look at is gonna be uh, SUI system. Cause this guy apparently does not work right. 
Um, and it could be from all the out of date stuff that's happening. So if we think about this, we call recalculate world X form from self. Self then says, okay, if I have a parent, call recalculate world X form on that parent. Then we go ahead and get the world from that parent. Oh, wait a minute. Um, did we set the world? Yeah, we set the world here. Okay. So um, it basically just calls this function again, recursively on up the chain. Uh, if we do not have that, then the parent's world matrix is just an identity matrix, which theoretically we don't even have to do that, right? We could actually, we could actually say if we don't have a parent, um, then we can say x form world set self x form, and for the world matrix we can actually just use local, right? Which is done. here. So we recalculate the local matrix. Which would mean that we essentially can do mat for this. Um, so self world would only go need to be done here. That makes more sense. So we're gonna have to run this no matter what, right? So we recalculate the local matrix um, using the current X form properties. We go ahead and grab a copy of that. Then we say, if we have the parent, recalculate its world X form, grab a copy of that world X form, then calculate the self world x form by taking the, that local that we calculated up here, multiplying that by the parent's world matrix. And then we set self's world matrix to self world, right? Um, otherwise, if we do not have a parent, right, we've calculated the local matrix, taken a copy of it. We then can just actually say, well, the world matrix in this case is the local matrix because it doesn't have a parent. So there's actually no further mu multiplication needed. I don't know that that's going to solve the issue. But it might. Uh, let's see. <laughs> dig, dig the Geep GitHub repo, my dude. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I try to keep it somewhat organized, and it's getting more organized as time continues, for sure. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my caveman code that's comparable to stone stone hatchet compared to this samurai sword engine you're making. Yeah, I mean this this isn't even really a samurai sword yet, right? Um, it's it's very very much not refined yet. Um, and to be completely honest, I haven't really done much in terms of performance at all on it, which is probably not gonna matter for the first game, but um, for the second or third game, it's definitely gonna matter. Just realized the stream was like five minutes behind for me for some reason. Really? Five minutes? That's crazy. Does, did that um, did that get better when you like refreshed it or something? Okay. Yeah, I know I know Twitch uh, does that too eventually. I think every time it buffers, it like doesn't actually like skip ahead. It just kind of gives you the video that was that it was behind on and so I think if if you get a lot of buffering that can happen um, it'll like it'll add up after a while uh, let's see so we built that let me see I I don't think that that's where the problem was so let me just let's run this yeah see our our button is still up there so oh you know what I should have done 
Let me close. I'll close all of these. And we'll open up. We will open up. Um, standard UI system C. And we'll go to 457. Uh, let's see, where was that? Standard UI system. Oh, it was a little bit further down. Okay. So let me actually just make sure <laughs> that update is being called. It is. Okay. So I'm going to kill this breakpoint for a second and just continue the application. And now I'm going to say, okay, let's put a breakpoint here and step through and see if we can't figure out why this isn't working. So, uh, self, we're going to get the X form handle. Handle index is one. Uh, the unique ID looks valid. Okay. So uh, we're going to calculate local. We don't have an invalid handle. So we're going to go ahead and calculate the local. Uh, speaking of which, which, what is self? So this is the debug console background panel. So uh, this doesn't have a parent, I don't believe. So let's actually put a breakpoint here for one that does have a parent, right? Um, let's get rid of this. And let's, oh, interesting. <laughs> so this is just running indefinitely and we're never hitting this breakpoint, which means that we're not setting the parent pointer for anything. That's neat. That would be the bug. Okay, so um, let's see. Control remove child and control add child are what we're going to want to look for. So yeah, sure enough, we're not setting the parent anywhere in here. All right, so when we add a child, uh, we're, uh, we take the parent and the child and his arguments. Um, if we don't have a parent, then it's the type state root. Um, create the array if we need it. Um, if the child has a parent, then we're going to remove it from its current parent. And then we'll go ahead and push it to the children. So the issue with this is we're pushing it to the children, right? Um, but we're not then saying child parent equals parent, right? Uh, and conversely, we have a remove child, which takes a parent and a child. Um, and here, we say if the parent children sub i equals that, we pop it out of the array, right? But we don't do child parent equals zero, right? Because at this point, when you remove it as a child, it does not have a parent, it's orphaned at that point. And what that will mean is until we attach it to something else, it's not going to be part of the, the actual updates that occur. All right. Um, and I think that's actually, I think that might be the entire bug. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Ivo, I get it. It's 2.30 2 a.m. there. Good night. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for hanging out. Appreciate it. Uh, Psycode, good to see you, by the way. I uh, got a weird question. I assume Roman is your surname. Where is it from? It's Dutch. Um, yeah. And a lot of people cannot pronounce it because V and R next to each other, like they're like, what? And so I'll get Vorman a lot, which is wrong. But yeah, uh, it's Dutch. Uh, oh, Banisera actually put in there. Uh, let's see. Um, 
derived from a personal name composed of the ancient Germanic elements of Frodo Clever Intelligent plus Mundo Protection. In, <laughs> so, Clever Intelligent and Protector. So I'm a smart tank? <laughs> is what I'm getting? <laughs> Means I suck at DPS, but I'm good at defense, I guess. That's that's what I'm getting from it. And maybe maybe I could use magic too, right? I guess that defines my stats. I mean, I guess I guess it's somewhat accurate, right? Cuz got to pump iron to to increase DPS, yeah. I haven't pumped iron in a few years now. A tank with magic capabilities. Your IRL name means wise protector in Gaelic. That's pretty cool. And I don't know why I never thought to look that up. I know my family has been here since like the 1700s. I want to say. One of the one of the things that I want to do um, whenever I get a chance to go back to the motherland, as it is, as as it were, is uh, definitely to uh, look up my family history there for sure. Uh, so I'm going to kill this breakpoint, by the way, and I'm just going to run this and see if it fixes some stuff. Hey, look at that. This is where it should be. Uh, and I bet if I open the console, we now have our little indicator where we type, and we can type things that don't appear. So we're partially fixed, anyway. Looks like it's appearing up there for some reason. That may be an issue with how the text box is implemented. It's a, it's about advice on defining a struct. <laughs> nice. Surnames are rich and interesting things to learn about. Yeah, for sure. Names in general, absolutely. Doc Lock, what's happening, my dude? Good to see you. How have you been? For those of you who don't know, Doc Lock is another streamer here on Twitch. And he's an awesome dude. And if you're not following him, you should be. Couple of crazy weeks. Yeah, fair enough. I understand that. You've been out of pocket for a minute. Yeah, I I totally get that too. Things have been crazy for me too. Crazy busy with side projects and whatnot. And work, of course. Good to see you though. <laughs> Trocolodito2000. I love the username, by the way. Been following your series uh, for a while. You have no idea the power you have of inspiring people. Well, I hope that's true. Uh, I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Uh, I'm your fan from Mexico. Cool. That's awesome. I've been to Mexico. It's beautiful. It's been a while since I've been there, but... Welcome. Are you looking at VS Code right now? Yes, you are, because it's uh, my debugger. Yeah. But yes, you are. Yeah, I agree, Tamman. His his name nickname is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so um, I code in this guy here, right? But I have to. Uh, I still have to debug in this. Um, okay, so I suspect. I suspect that I'm doing. Oh yeah, I think I think I said that my clip map was doing some stuff weird, but also. So let's see, this is all for the clip map, which I think, I th think is working correct. Maybe it's not working correctly. So there's a couple things here. Um, so when we, when we load the control, we have a couple things that we set up. Um, Obviously, we have to set up all the font, uh, the font stuff. Here's the geometry clip config. Um, let's see. Then we have the content label, right? So the content label is the actual like little text bit that that appears within the text box. 
um, label content label um, so when we create that where do we actually so there's a couple things we have the highlight box which actually does seem to be working correctly well technically the cursor is working correctly i don't know about the highlight box we haven't tried that yet um so when we create when we create this where are we then setting it up as a parent? I don't know that we are, and that might be the problem. Um, so when we load, generate the nine slice. Resources acquire, system register control. Here's the, okay, so we do X form position set here on the content label form, X form rather. And I think what we did here before was set the parents. So I'm wondering now if we actually just need to say type data, um, content label, parent uh, is equal to self. And I'm wondering if I should do that here. Let's try, let's see if this actually fixes it. Clip map terrain. Uh, no, we don't have clip map terrain. No. Uh, so the um, the the clipping that we're using is for the actual text box control. Um, so when we when we take a look at this text box, right? There's a bunch of things going on with that. Um, so you have the sort of box itself, right? And then you have text that renders inside of that, which we, we have fixed now. Perfect. Okay. So you have, um, you have the text that, that goes inside of it. Um, and then you can select those things. It looks like the selection box is actually not working. We need to fix that. Um, and then uh, the other thing that you can do is, uh, so when you're like typing, that thing renders in there. You have the little cursor. You have a highlight box, which is not uh, not showing up. Um, and you have the ability to scroll back and forth um, in the text if it exceeds the length of the text box, right? So we, we take all of that stuff into account. Um, so we need this. And then the cursor seems to be working correctly. Um, so there's the cursor. The we do have something called the highlight box, and then we have something called a clip, uh, a clip box. So the clip, uh, the clipping mask rather, is what is used to keep the text from rendering outside the area of the box, right? Yeah, yeah, we're using chunked LOD terrain. Yep. Yeah, so completely different um, concept here. Uh, okay. Here is the highlight box. We set the position. Yeah, we never we never set it. Um, we never set its parent. That's why. So now I should be able to show you that how that's supposed to work. And these bugs are just showing up because we we just switched out our entire transform system that we used for everything. Um, so we're just kind of resolving some of that stuff. Um, so if I type some text here and hold shift and go to the left, right, 
uh, we have some highlighting there. It looks like it's wrong, right? But it's supposed to highlight a certain section of ads. Because ads pop up on Twitch. Got to pay the Bezos, right? Um, so I will answer the why build an engine in just a second, actually. As soon as we get through ads. Got a little less than 30 seconds left on ads. All right, and ads are dead. So, um, Banisser Gaming asks, so big question, why build an engine? To which some people in chat countered, why not? Um, and uh, customization and performance is one good reason. So, there's a few reasons behind it, right? Um, <laughs> any other engine than your own is bloat. So, um, my reason for doing this is several fold. Um, A, I like to have control over everything that's going on. Um, I like to have complete control in, in, um, in any bugs that occur, uh, things like that. So when you are using a third party engine, chances are you're probably not gonna be able to fix bugs that, that pop up with that engine, right? Um, whereas if you own the code base, you can fix those things. Um, but that also means you have to fix it, right? So bear that in mind too. Um, additionally, uh, since you own it, you don't, you're not beholden to anybody for any sort of royalties or licensing fees or anything like that. Um, that being said with this engine, this engine is fully open source and free. Uh, so this particular engine has no licensing fees or royalties of any kind. It never will. Um, and so, um, you know, that's another reason, right? Um, having a full understanding of the architecture and everything, um, is another reason. Um, you may also have bespoke requirements for your game that no out of the box uh, game engine easily supports. Um, and so you may have to write an engine for that reason. You might be writing it for educational purposes, which is another reason that we're writing this engine is for, um, uh, is for educational purposes, right? And so um, it, I think it's extremely valuable as a game developer to have some understanding of how these things work under the hood. Maybe you don't need to go out and write a renderer of your own, um, but I think it's a good idea to understand. I think everybody should have that kind of understanding of at least what's going on under the hood. It helps you solve those higher level issues a lot easier, right? So um, just to show you really quickly, we do have, uh, I'll drop some links here in the chat. Um, we do have a website for the project that's called koheengine.com. Um, this is sort of a, a central portal to the whole thing um, where we've got like links to the Discord, uh, YouTube, Twitch, uh, Patreon, that kind of stuff. Uh, but if we go to the GitHub, we can see here that it's fully uh, open source. It is Apache 2.0 licensed. What this means is that if you use the engine, you are welcome to use it for, uh, for personal or commercial use. But if you use the engine, all I ask is that you say you used it. That's literally it. There's no, um, no royalties, no licensing fees of any kind ever. Um, that's it, right? Um, the other thing that, that uh, this uh, license uh, does not require that a lot of other licenses, such as GPL, require um, is that this doesn't even require that you open source your own code. So if you use if you use this for a project, you don't have to open source it, right? It's pretty permissive. So 
If I owned a game a game company, every artist would be required to learn engine stuff. You'd have to limit that somewhat, right? Because your creative team generally is not going to uh, understand super technical stuff, and that's okay, right? Because they have understanding of other stuff that you may not as, as a developer. Um, and that's where your technical artists come into play, right? You're, you have uh, a role, a very important role, that's called a technical artist, uh, that acts as the liaison between dev and the creative team, right? And they typically are the ones that handle things like rigging, importing assets, um, you know, optimizing assets, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're technical artist oriented, right? But, but a lot of artists are not. Um, so you just have to bear that in mind, right? It depends on the team too. So if you're, if you're a technical artist, that's also very creative, um, and can bounce around on that, that's good. Right. Um, Let's see, uh, Juni Z, thank you for the uh, the follow. Pretty sure I pronounced that wrong, but uh, welcome and thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, so like as Diamond says, you know that's pretty unrealistic to have your your artists or your creatives, you know, you understand the the underlying stuff, right? They're not programmers. Um, in most cases, a game will be more optimal with an engine designed for it. Yes. Most commercial engines are designed considering many use cases and are they're basically bloated. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's one of the reasons that we're going with a plugin based approach um, and a modular approach is to try and get away from that. Um, uh, so are games running on Kohi? Not yet. No. Um, it's a bit premature for that. So uh, our, our version is we're actually working on version 0 0.7 now. So to give you an idea of where we are in the project, actually, we have a active to-do list that I keep. Um, and this is in the repo as well. Um, so everything on this list with an X is stuff that's already done. Everything that is empty is to-do, right? And some of these, this isn't in any sort of uh, priority order or anything like that, right? And so if I just quickly scroll through this, because it's kind of a long document, right? We have a lot of stuff done there's also a lot of stuff to do. And we don't need all of this for the first couple games we're gonna, we're gonna build, right? Um, so everything from here up, right? Everything from here up is all, um, you know, just generic engine stuff. Uh, renderer specific stuff is here, right? So there's still some stuff we have to do with the renderer um, and a lot of stuff isn't even listed here. Um, we have plugins that we're going to develop. develop. Uh, we have uh, our standard UI that I'm sort of touching right now. Um, and then we have, you know, an editor, right? And that's very high level at this point. Um, and then other uh, various items that need to happen. Excuse me. And so, um, you know, we're a decent, decent amount of the way along, but we're nowhere near ready to... Um, well, I can't say nowhere near, but... We're not ready just yet to actually start a game soon. Um, <laughs> I have a feature request. If your engine could allow me to travel around an entire planet, I would strongly consider using it. I mean, that's model a planet, right? And then just fly around it, right? Um, really, it's, it's not a function of the engine to do that, right? That's, I mean, it is, but... It's also kind of a function of your game code and the way that you set up your assets and stuff, right? Okay. Um, so why is our why is our highlight box foobar? Um. Unload sub controls that aren't children. Oh, interesting. So we didn't have them set up as children before. Now they're they are set up as children. So what does the render actually do for this? Because maybe they should be children. I don't see any reason for them not to be. So, the 
content label looks right. Uh, highlight box. Let's see. This is all for highlighting. Update highlight box. Okay, I don't think the Y gets updated in any of this. So here's where we register the control. So this is interesting. I have a comment in here saying that we only parented the transform, not the control, to have control over how the clipping mask is attached and drawn. But it looks like this works just fine with, oh, wait a minute, it does not. Maybe that's why the clipping, maybe that's why the highlight box doesn't work correctly. That might actually be the reason. So the, the clipping mask probably can't be a child. Clipping. Let's see. Clip mask. So right here, we're getting the render data model from that. So that is probably what's gonna have to be updated, I'm thinking. Um, Didn't we do? We're manually updating that though. So let me, hmm. So I think it's being, per, I think it's being positioned correctly. The only thing we're parenting is the content label, which actually should be parented, and the highlight box, which I think could also be parented. But maybe not, maybe that's the problem. It's been a while since I wrote this, so I have to kind of ref refresh my memory on how it worked. Um, okay. So it looks like in both of these cases, we're actually getting a, oh, wait a minute, this is wrong. This should be, clip mask render data, wait a minute. Attach clipping mask to text, which would be the last element added. So why are we doing this here and here? I think we need to do... This is correct, I believe. This, I think, is not. Uh, 
Let's see. Uh, well, you have PBR as long as the metal is shiny and the rocks are, are rough, you're golden. Yeah, and they, they all should be, right? We need to do some material tests around that stuff, right? Oh, permission denied. Uh, that is because we're still running. Okay. Let me try this again. I don't think that's going to fix the issue, but... Yeah, no, it doesn't. Okay. Because I should be able to highlight that. Okay. Um, so this is interesting. So... How did that break? This is what broke it. So I'm wondering if this is correct and the clip mask is just wrong. Because this should technically be... This should technically be... Well, no, that shouldn't be parented, I think, because it has to be... It has to be rendered after the clip mask. So, Maybe I just need to do the same thing. Oops. With the highlight box. Um, so I don't need that. I actually don't need that either. So calculate local is going to be highlight box X form uh, and then we want highlight box local it's gonna be highlight box X form um, highlight box we'll call it highlight box world is gonna be highlight box local parent world and then the world set will do highlight box X form. Highlight box world, I think. Uh, let's see. Let's see, please remember the game developers. Uh, we want to make a game people can play with a normal GPU, not a cinematic rendering engine pretending to be a game engine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we're not making anything, um, we're not making anything here to compete with like the likes of Unreal, right? That's a whole huge team of people. Yeah, so I totally get where you're coming from on that. <laughs> normal GPU, yeah. Normal being, you know, fairly average, um, which I would say mine's probably a, well, maybe not anymore. Mine's probably a little above average. So I've got a 2080 Super at the moment. Um, so it's a pretty good, strong GPU. But yeah, um, I, would, I wouldn't say it's average just yet anyway, but I am going to be testing on hardware that's not that powerful for sure all right uh so let's see if this helped 
So we'll type some stuff. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it looks like the highlight box is still off. Okay. Um, I'm tempted to just move on from this for now because we're going to like put a pin in it anyway. Because we actually do need to revisit this. I just hate to leave it in a broken state. It's only visually broken. It still technically works, but... Let's see. Do we have... So this is the the updates there. So when we render, we render the the nine slice that goes behind. Then we render the content label. Then we say, okay, do we actually have text? If we do, we're then setting the clip mask render data model here. And if we have the we have the highlight box visible we call render on that this is redundant so the renderables Wait, are we applying that to the highlight box as well? I think we might actually be. Because this should only happen up here. That might be attaching it to both. Oh, you have an Intel Arc card? I've never tried one of those. Follow-up question. If you had to measure the time value of your engine, what would you say? Um... I see episode 191. This is why I asked the question. However, I understand it's a learning exercise, most definitely. Okay, so there's a couple things to keep in mind about this series. Um, one of which is it started off as a YouTube, YouTube tutorial series, um, but that format doesn't fit for very long, right? Um, once you start getting past a certain point of complexity, tutorial format just doesn't really work. We changed formats a few times. We wound up uh, live streaming around episode 100 or so, I think. Um, and so uh, I would say that you know everything here is 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 live dev. So you see the debugging, you see uh, the thought process behind the design decisions and all that stuff. Um, so from that point, I would say it's very valuable, right? Um, bear in mind too that we do experiment and try things in this series so there are going to be features that get implemented that are later removed um, there's a lot of debugging yes um, we had a session was it last week or the week before where like almost the whole stream was debugging um, so that does happen right but it's a reality of working on a project this size and this complex is that you're going to have that right and so um from what you guys have been telling me, 
um, both on the Twitch side and on the YouTube side and comments and stuff like that. Um, you guys seeing that stuff and seeing my thought process on that has been valuable. So I keep that. Um, it was really fun, right? There was a, there was lots of, uh, dingus oriented programming there as we call it now. It's what I'm being a dingus and writing stupid stuff in code. <laughs> um, let's see. There is a question over on the YouTube side. Can you suggest some good advanced level projects in Rust or C? Maybe a naive question. I may start graphic program graphics programming. Any resources to study the maths behind it? <coughs> yes. Um, so uh, what is it? Um, I will drop a link. There is a fantastic YouTube channel called Three Blue, One Brown that goes into all the maths that you'll ever need and more for game dev stuff. Um, he explains it way better than I ever could, to be completely honest, so I don't even try. Um, as a math resource there, that is the place to go, 100%. Um, and I would also say, uh, if you're looking like... I guess your, your question is a little bit loaded, right? So, like, I don't know where you stand on your Rust slash C experience. If you're really comfortable with the language, you know, uh, but you're not comfortable with graphics programming, I would say, you know, maybe take a look at OpenGL um, just to get your feet wet with graphics programming, but then quickly switch to Vulkan at some point, right? Um, wrangle the concepts of OpenGL, but then switch to Vulkan, right? Because... OpenGL is deprecated. It's not going to get any more updates. Um, and you don't want to be working with deprecated stuff. But its API is a lot simpler. So that would be my suggestion there. Um, yeah, you always recommend it to math-related math related to graphics programming. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic resource for sure. That bug perplexed us for a very long time. Yeah, uh, the string bug that was obliterating the uh, the stack, that was fun. Um, as a relatively new dev, seeing the thought process and debugging is great. It's nice to learn from because I just wouldn't know it otherwise. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, and it comes from lots of experience trying this stuff over the years. Um, did I build this already? I think I did. Uh, let's see. See if this fixed it at all. Oops, I didn't need to load that. Whatever. Okay, so that's better, right? We're not attaching the clipping mask anymore. It's just the transform is off. Uh, okay, so let me think about that. What were we doing? with the transform of that before, that would have changed at this point. Uh, Pepper Pains, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that, welcome. Um, yeah, no problem, Carver. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'll, I'll answer them to the best of my ability, right? I don't always know, but if I do, I will help. Um, it also looks like this is like off by one. Right? Because like if I select the A, it's like over to the left of it. So it's like it's like off by one. But then it's also too high. Oh, huh, that's okay. Um, okay, so if we look at the highlight box, uh, this is actually, you know what, I'm just going to go upwards in our search. All right, so I think that is good. It's also good as we have an ad break. So 
So for those of you who are new to the channel, we just um, like to break for ads uh, whenever they come up on the Twitch side, which is once every 30 minutes for 90 seconds. I'm going to hydrate. We got about uh, 40 seconds left on ads. Almost done. All right, and ads are done. Uh, let's see. Timps, any questions about OpenGL or just in general? Um, if you're responding to uh, what I was talking about earlier, you know, just in general, right? Um, it's actually been a while since I've touched OpenGL. Uh, I've been messing with it uh, for a a side project that I'm working on and uh, I had to like go back and look a bunch of stuff up because I forgot how it worked because I've been using Vulkan for so long that I forgot a lot of my OpenGL stuff um, just because Vulkan works so differently I've wrote I've wrote a lot of OpenGL over the years but when you haven't touched it for a couple years it kind of starts to fade away alright Set an initial position. Uh, let's see. If I want to follow your series from start and code along, but try to write it in Rust, will it work? I don't know. I'm not a um, I'm not a Rust connoisseur. Um, I've not used it beyond like trivia, trivial type of programs, so I can't really answer that. Uh, what I do know here is that we do. Um, lots of things around uh, working directly with blocks of memory. And I don't know how Rust is with that, right? I think uh, we do a lot of things that Rust would consider unsafe. So you may run into some issues there. Because there's lots of lots of cases where we reach into the memory and we, we modify those bits ourselves or we you know move things around. Especially with our allocators and stuff like that. So you may run into some problems there. Um, if you try and port it that way. Uh, let's see. I'm primary, primarily a SQL dev, but then uh, I was introduced to Power Apps and it's so much faster to prototype an idea for biz apps. So my perspective is skewed. That's fair. I get that. That's what I do during the day too. I, I do, I've spent like most of this week actually in SQL, analyzing a pretty massive database. Um, okay. So it looks like we're taking the line height and then moving it up by about four. Excuse me. Tired tonight, apparently. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure that this is actually correct. Because we're, we're off by one. We're off by one on the x-axis, and then we're off by like an entire line on the y-axis. Um, and this is just the initial load. Do we have... This is update, update highlight box. Okay, so this is actually where we probably want to look. Um, so we have offset start, which would be X. 
initial position y, initial position z. So let's see, what is initial position? That is x form position get, highlight box x form. Okay, so we get that by handle, then we say, uh, Barak the shark, thank you for the follow, appreciate that. Um, Ghost Goblin 4, thank you for the follow, appreciate that. So we are doing, oh, interesting. So we're doing negative line height plus 10. Let me try. Let me try disabling this real quick and just see where it gets me. Uh, Banisera Gaming, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. All right. Um, so let's try running this and see. Oh, interesting. Now it's below the line. Hmm. Which I think is why I had that offset there before. Rordo, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome. Thank you guys very much for the, the follows. Uh, the support definitely helps me a lot. I'm trying to grow these uh, these channels, right? The, the, not only the Twitch channel, but also over on the YouTube side. Um, just to reach more people, right? So every every follow slash sub, depending on, on which side you're on, helps me out a lot. Appreciate that. Um, Banana Sur with the uh, Prime sub. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that support. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, <laughs> I need to eat pizza and prep for something productive. Have a good evening. All right. All right awesome. Good talking with you, Ghost. Have a good one. Uh, if you're open to a curveball, I tried using semaphores for the first time today, but I couldn't get it to work. Do you know any good, simple implementations I could look at? Um, probably the ones. And I don't know if you're um, familiar with these, but... Uh, let me see if I can remember how to spell his name. Uh, Sasha Willems has some pretty good, simple... Vulcan examples that are worth a look for sure um, and semaphores are in there somewhere for sure um, yeah so it's got all kinds of I'll just drag this down so you guys can quickly see it it's got um, all kinds of, of different uh, examples on stuff that um, he does in Vulcan um, everything up from a first triangle to pipelines to descriptor sets, all that kind of stuff. And I think, I'm pretty sure that's covered in here somewhere. But yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in here, right? So definitely have a look at that. Uh, I'll drop me, I'll drop a link over here on the YouTube side as well. Um, the This UI system sort of reminds me of the Gold Source games a bit. Yeah, fair enough. Old school, right? Um, which is just the approach I'm going for for now to get something drawn on the screen. Eventually, we want something much more robust, for sure. Um, okay. So we want this offset. Do we want to negate that, though? Let's try that, but without the plus 10. Uh, first time chat, Barack, welcome. Yeah. Uh, from reading the title, it seems there's some actual programming going on in here. Yeah, I'd like to actually program, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't like to... I mean, we do have design sessions, right? But like... 
but I'm saying I program, I actually like to actually do that. Um, okay, so, well, we're programming slash debugging, I should say. Uh, so let's see, does this work? Nope, that's way off. Way, way off. So... I wonder if this should not be negated then. Uh, Timps, are you talking about, um, when you mentioned semaphores, I assumed you were talking Vulcan. Are you talking semaphores at the operating system level then? Like at the Windows level? I just assumed you were talking about Vulcan. That's completely wrong too. Why is that? Okay. I need to think this through because I feel like I'm doing something really dumb now. So initial position Y. Let's just undo this to its original state. Because my Y offset is just completely freaking wrong for some reason. Uh, let's see. Not to hate on other streamers, but one of them was using chat Jippity to write his code. To be honest, Accenture is doing the same thing with GitHub Copilot. Yeah, I'm not into that. Um, that, that stuff's never given me code that I would actually ever want to use in production ever. Not once. Um, yeah, that's pretty much my feeling on it. It's nowhere near to the point where I would actually want to rely on that. Um, let's see. Are you on Vulkan 1.3? If so, do you use render passes? So we are on Vulkan 1.3, um, but we do use render passes. And the reason is, is because there's a lot of hardware out there that does not support doing it the other way. And while I could write this and not use render passes, I don't want to then also have to write it to support render passes and support both paths of code of doing that, right? If I have to support it on some platforms, I might as well just use it across the board, right? Um, and so that's that's what we're doing. We didn't start off on 1.3 because 1.3 wasn't even out when this engine started. Um, we were on 1.2, but yeah. Even though it's 1.3 co core, um, we don't... Uh, we don't necessarily support that. For example, we uh, we are on um, we're ported to Mac OS using Molten VK. Molten VK is only on 1.2 at the moment. So there's that. Um, Never copied from ChatGPT, but you do use it as a better alternative to Google sometimes. Sometimes, but sometimes the information it gives you is wrong. I always look at the documentation after it gives me an example with some API. That's fair. Yeah, always definitely. I would say trust, but verify with a lot of things. But I would say with ChatGPT, don't trust and definitely verify. Um, yeah, I'm going for wide support. Yep. Um, and my plan is, is basically if there are a couple things that I'm, that I'm like drawing a line in the sand saying, if you don't support this, like this Vulcan implementation, is not going to work for you. Um, but those are sort of really fringe type of cases. Um, but we're also going to have other rendering backends. So we're going to support, uh, we're going to support direct 3D, for example. So if you're on Windows, you'll probably be wanting to use that. Um, and we're also going to support Metal um, on Mac OS, which means when we switch to Mac OS, we 
uh, or when we uh, switch to having full metal support, we'll probably deprecate Vulcan support on that platform. So, um, true, but so is Google. Yeah, that's true. And Stack Overflow gives you a lot of wrong stuff too. You have to be smart enough to know good info from bad info, but also smart enough to look it up and verify, right? Uh, views that tell me get syntax right on languages I'm less familiar with. So syntactical things, that would probably be fine, right? It'd probably get that right, mostly. Uh, let's see, yes, OS semaphores for thread synchronization. Yeah, so um, I do a little bit of that in here. Um, so there, there are semaphores that are that are implemented in this engine. I don't heavily use them, though. Um, I usually just use mutexes for, for most of it. But we do have them in place um, in this engine. So if there is an example in there if you want it. Um, I plan on using them a lot more, by the way, once we do more stuff with, with uh, multi-threading. Right now, uh, we do some multi-threading, but we are only really using that in our job system. And the only thing that's really jobified at the moment is... Um, Texture loading and mesh loading, static mesh loading. Eventually, we're going to split that up too and make make a lot more stuff jobified and really use multi-threading to our um, to our max potential. But right now, we're not. Had to do a bunch of VB.NET programming for work. I'm sorry, been there, done that. Um, a language I have no passion for whatsoever. I feel you on that. I had to do that for a number of years myself. Just asking it, like, how do I declare a variable in vb.net, things like that. Yeah, that's probably pretty safe, right? But anything beyond that, you wouldn't really want to do. Okay. So. The initial position we get from... This is update highlight box. Let me think about this for a second. So we get the position from the highlight boxes X form. We set its Y equal to negative line height plus 10. So that should take it from the top, move it down and then move it back up. Then we go ahead and we set that position of the highlight box X form to offset start, which is gotten by this initial position Y, initial position Z, and then scale set. So these are all local. Okay, and cursor offset and, and so we use cursor offset to get the offset start and offset end. So I wonder if this really is just a case of we're just maybe doing the parenting wrong. So we calculate the local here, we get the local here. We multiply that local against the parent world. And then we set it here. This doesn't look wrong to me. Hmm. All right, tell you what, I'm gonna put a pin in this because I wanna move on to other stuff. And we're gonna have to rework this hierarchy anyways. And I'm actually not a huge fan of the way that we're handling the clip masking in here. So I want to rethink that anyway. So I'm going to do a to do. The transform 
of this um, highlights box is uh, wrong. You know what? This is not even a to do. This is a fix me. Absolute line height. Yeah, I don't think line height is negative, right? Like, I don't think... Because here's the thing, right? Like, all of this stuff was accurate. Beforehand. And just by changing the... Away from the transform to the X-form system, it's wrong. And it looks like it's correct everywhere else except this. But I'm wondering if there's actually another bug in here. Because the other thing I noticed... And this is why I'm thinking of putting a pin in it and coming back to it because this isn't really the point of the stream and it's kind of taking a little bit more time than I wanted to. But if we launch this, uh, Destroyer Jot and Balls Jaws. Thank you for the, uh, the fall. It's a hilarious name, by the way. Um, so I, the other thing I noticed was like, if I type, um, SS in here, for example, right. And then I backspace, uh, the first one goes away. The second one actually doesn't, it remains there, even though I can't select it or anything. Right. And so if I, if I type a new first character, it's there, right. But as soon as I backspace, it doesn't go away. So there's some kind of bug in there with that. And then, you know, this. The selection box is just off by one too. So I'm wondering if the off by one is actually just maybe a case of like the first thing just not updating or something. I think there's something else going on with that. So for now, I'm just gonna put a pin in it, I think, uh, because we've done quite a lot. It's up and running, it works. Um, and we can actually update our to-do uh, let's see. And we could leave that in there as a known issue because I think we're going to come back and rework it anyway. Uh, let's see. So, um, this is a little bit what we've been working on, right? So this 0 0.7 scene refactor includes all of this stuff, right? So we've done rename simple scene to just scene. Um, create a new, unique per system handle. We've done that already. Created the new X form structure. Um, we've created a hierarchy graph that manages the transform hierarchy and could provide a view for it. Um, also generating world matrices. Um, we remove the transform from mesh. Um, replace any and all transforms with X form handles. We have done that. Um, update systems and create some to use handles. So this handles thing is something that we want to do cross system. I don't think you guys probably need to see me do all these. I could probably just handle most of these off, off camera um, and show them to you later. Uh, the two most complicated ones to do this with are going to be these two guys and maybe this. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Um, deserialization routines in serialization routines. Um, we've actually accomplished this. This is actually done too. Um, this was kind of like, as I was specking it out, I kind of just wrote it all in here. So that's actually done. Um, and so before we can actually merge 0 0.7 and like cut a release, so to speak, we do need to get these things done. So that way uh, these are set up the way that we need them uh, in the future. But what I can do is all of this work that we've been doing has been on a X form hierarchy branch. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be right. Cause we're not really like, we're pretty much done with X forms for now. Um, so I think we can actually switch to like a new branch and start working out some of these handle issues. Um, and then once we have that done, that's probably all I'm going to put in 0.7, right? Because that's a pretty massive refactor um, to include a lot of that stuff. We also are going to have to take a look 
through here and kind of pick another thing that we need to start thinking of, um, of developing. So, mm, let's see. There's a lot of this stuff that frankly won't matter for the first game that we do. So that's also what I'm trying to think of here, right? Um, we probably are gonna need billboards. We might need particles. So those might be some things that we tackle sometime soon. Um, touch and gamepad support, I don't think we need right away. I18N, that, that's something we should probably tackle sometime soon too. Um, so I18N, for those of you that don't know, um, is short for internationalization, right? Which is a really long ass word. Um, and actually, this is 18 characters in between there, right? So I18N literally just means I, 18 characters, and then N, which is internationalization. <laughs> Hate it. Yeah. Um, you know what, though? Like, I've written a lot of these systems, um, and so the way that we're going to handle it is we're going to try and keep it fairly simple. Right, I think simple is best. And the nice thing is, is I think we can actually leverage our new storage format to help us with that. Um, so we wanna have uh, something that's that's very configurable so that we can just say, uh, switch language on the fly and, um, and be able to have uh, that support. Um, you've written many IoT systems as well? Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, I, th I think they're kind of fun to write. Um. <laughs> I allowed the I allowed the uh, the chat there, Arvis. You bleeped it out, but auto mod caught it anyway. Um. Seems like every implementation of that is always a CF. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not hard, and I think that's part of why I hate it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it very very simple, right? Um, we're going to have, at least initially, just a very simple, like, key lookup system that we'll use um, for stuff like that, right? Um, and we'll, we'll basically just use token replacement to handle it. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, I think that one will be a fun one to work on, and that's going to be something that we're going to have to do. Um, I guess we don't have to internationalize like the first test game that we're doing, but it might be a cool thing to work on, right? Uh, the hardest part about that actually is just getting the translations, right? Because I don't speak all those languages. So that might be an issue. Um, I18N strings, right? That's another... I don't know why that's separate, but... Oh, I guess this one was for uh, keyboard layouts. That might be a fun one, actually. But again, probably not necessarily needed. Um, oh, this is done. Um, we also have... Like, our tokenizer, our parser is done. Um... I guess we could also say um, two string is done, right? Because we have that. Uh, and then we also have um, deserialization is also done. Serialization and deserialization. Um, physics system we're not going to need networking we're not going to need profiling eh skeletal animation system is going to be kind of important we might have to hit that very soon maybe even next we'll see sky sphere I think I could probably get away with not doing that water plane we might need like it might be nice to have a 
a nice looking water plane. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to be doing some rendering stuff. Oh, missed the ads. Uh, let's see. Uh, I do see your uh, questions over there on the YouTube side. I'll answer those in just a second uh, as soon as the ads are over. Almost done with ads, actually. We have less time than what's on the timer. I'm going to interrupt it, actually, because I caught it a little bit late. So we really have uh, about 10 seconds or so left. All right. So... Um, yeah, it's probably going to be it's probably going to be something in here that we're going to do next. Um, skeletal animation system and timeline system kind of go hand in hand, so we might uh, we might look into setting those up next. Um, profiling is actually really fun. Yeah, so we will need to do a profiling pass on the engine for sure uh, for performance reasons. Um, but I do want to write some profiling tools into the engine. I don't again. I don't think we'll need to do that for our first kind of simple game, but. Uh, certainly, later on, we're going to want that. Um, you're probably over like halfway there with Kaysen for i 18 and Exactly. Yeah, we're going to be able to le leverage that for sure um, very easily. So that's going to be... In fact, there's nothing that we have to modify in our Kaysen processing to even handle that, right? It's basically just become string processing at that point. So that's actually going to be pretty easy to set up. Um, it's almost inevitable you will want some sort of performance metric, be it CPU or GPU, or both. Yeah, so we're definitely going to have to do performance profiling, for sure. Um, okay. So let's do this. We have a bunch of stuff we changed. Um, one thing that I changed also, and I think it's going to show up here, is uh, in the Clang format, I switched from Google to LLVM uh, style in terms of the formatting. Uh, and the reason I did that is because for some reason, Google, like after I updated my, after I updated my NeoVim and all the plugins and all that stuff, uh, all my pointers started formatting to the left to the right side and I prefer left for that. Um, so I had to switch that up. Um, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, this pretty much ties it up, right? So add um, so we have uh, finished x form, uh, we'll say transform x form conversion um, that's really it I guess we had to change all that stuff right just for that so we'll do git push and if you want to see something really crazy we're gonna go we are gonna go to this branch here and we're going to create a pull request to 0 0.7. And so we're we're basically finally going to get rid of this uh, refactor X form scene branch. That way uh, we can do the handle work under a different branch, right? Because we've been on this branch um, for long enough. Specifically, we've had 32 commits and 92 file ch files changed, right? So we've actually accomplished quite a lot. Um, 
So I'm not going to scroll through all of this. I'm just going to kind of quickly like breeze past it just to give you an idea of how much stuff we've changed on this branch. Quite a lot, right? Um, so I think it's time we, uh, we, we leave this branch behind. Uh, yeah, you can do it when the necessity arises. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, I wonder, does Clang GCC have anything similar to MSVC's debug help API? For example, debug help provides functions to get a stack trace. Um, there are things in the um, in Glib that have that, like for stack trace, for example. I don't know if I'm going to use it, though, because um, believe it or not, because of that stuff runs in the actual code, it, if you have stack or heap corruption, it can actually make it worse. Believe it or not. Um, I really need to spend a full day and set up a proper claim format file. Mine is amalg amalgamation of all small things that are starting to annoy me. Yeah, I get that. You do hear the heartbound OST. Yep. Yeah, Exc exclamation point music. Thor was uh, kind enough to allow me to use it, so you are correct. Um, your search spit out a stack trace now. Yeah, I thought about doing that, and I was looking into it, um, because there is there are ways to do it, right? But like, if you are having issues with memory at all, it can completely like point you in the wrong direction, even. If you're doing that, it can just point you towards something that's not even a problem because it can actually cause the stack or heap corruption to get even worse. Which I know sounds insane, but uh, let's see. So let's create this. We just have a commit or two in here. <laughs> just one or two. Um, all right, so we'll be able to merge uh, straight into 0 0.7. And we're going to squash and merge and nuke the branch. So I can do a git checkout 0 0.7.0. .0. Cool. So now we're back um, on the 0 0.7 feature or, uh, version branch. Um, all the stack trace data is stored in a static buffer in, in your engine, so nothing is really allocated. <laughs> nothing ever bad happened because of heap, heap corruption, right? Right? Nothing bad? Yeah. Flashbacks to two weeks ago? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I suppose if you store it in a static buffer, then maybe you'll be all right. But mm, I don't know. Some of the things I've been reading, um, it may just may not be worth it. I don't know, though. Maybe it's worth a shot. It's something I'm certainly going to explore when we get to that that portion of, um, of the to-do, right? Uh... Yes, load the file. Okay. So, uh, that being said, this is where I'm going to cut the stream for tonight because I do have to get up in the morning and work. So, um, oh, right. There were a couple of things over on the YouTube side that I meant to answer. Sorry, I didn't get to those sooner. Um, are Oct trees easy enough to implement for scene partitioning? Yes, they are. In fact, I already kind of... Well, I've started putting together a quad tree. And an arc tree is really just another dimension on top of that. What is your favorite feature you worked on for the engine? PBR. For sure. Getting that working and seeing it working was super satisfying. Um, and we only have more stuff to add to that, actually. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing post effects, too. 
all right, time for bed. Good meeting you. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for the support. Um, yeah, definitely appreciate that. It's a 4K size buffer, so it should have enough space for most spaghetti code tra stack traces, but you never know. Yeah. Should. <laughs> should is what caused me a uh, four-hour debugging stream a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. That's a thing. All right. Um, so, uh, let me pick somebody to raid. Uh, but before I do, um, th I just want to say thank you to all of you who joined uh, tonight on the YouTube side and on the Twitch side and interacting. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's great to have you guys here. Um, and I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm enjoying having you guys here uh, and chatting with me and stuff. So thank you very much for the support um, there. I really do appreciate it. If you guys haven't already, um, I would encourage you to follow me in both places um, so that you see when new stuff is coming out. Um, I will be back tomorrow night um, around the same time. Um, and uh, we'll have a uh, another stream there where we're going to tackle something a little bit different. Um, so let me pick a channel to raid. Let me see who's on. Um, I think I know who I'm going to go with. Let's see. Okay, uh, well, the person I was looking at looks like they might be on ad break at the moment. So I may have to just wait just for a second. Sleep time for you too. Yeah, I get that. Oh, cool. He's back. All right. Uh, so we are going to raid Jitspo. Jitspo is working on a pretty um, cool looking... Um, like a retro FPS. Um, and I, I think it's a, it's a really neat looking project. He's done some pretty cool stuff uh, using the Godot engine. And so um, I'm going to, we're going to raid his, his channel tonight. And uh, I would just say, you know, ask him about, uh, ask him about his game. And uh, yeah, with that, um, we're going to go ahead and raid. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I'll drop a link actually, uh, on the YouTube side just here in a second um, to his channel as well if you want to view it there. Um, if you haven't already, like I said, uh, feel free to follow me in both places. Um, follow me uh, on all the socials. I'll drop my social spam there if you guys are interested in that. And uh, I will see you guys on the next stream. See ya.